Pastos Biology Topics from the Study Guide As you saw, muscle work is a very energy-intensive process. We'll begin with figure 8-7 in your manual. Muscle work requires a lot of energy. Now by muscle work we mean all of those processes that require ATP. Uh, binding of the cross bridge, bending of the cross bridge, pumping calcium back into the lateral sacs, releasing the cross bridge, and so forth. The ATP for muscle work, ATP found in the muscle splits, hydrolyzes into ADP, and this supplies the energy for the muscle work. So the question is, where does the ATP come from? Well, some of it comes from a storage molecule called creatine phosphate. Most of it, however, comes from cellular metabolism. The ATP in cellular metabolism arises from the breakdown of glucose to peruvic acid, which remember we call glycolysis. It generates some ATP. A lot more comes from the breakdown of peruvic acid into the steps of the Krebs cycle and the electron transport system, which generates a lot of ATP. Uh, this is the rest of cellular respiration. There are some drawbacks to that. One is, a major one, is that oxygen is required. Where does the oxygen come from? Well, it comes from breathing. However, muscles also contain another molecule called myoglobin. Myoglobin is a temporary storage form of, of oxygen. Now what color is fresh meat? Red. What color is blood? Red. Why is blood red? Because of the presence of hemoglobin. Well, the myoglobin binds to oxygen and gives the muscle its red color. Now this is an aerobic process, that is, oxygen is required. Carbon dioxide is produced as a waste product. What about the source of the material to generate ATP? Well, some of it comes from stored muscle glycogen. Other comes from glucose transported in by the blood. Another good source of energy are fatty acids. Fatty acids come from stored fat somewhere in the body and also from muscle fat. Muscle fat and stored fat are broken down into fatty acid molecules. The fatty acid molecules are dumped into the Krebs cycle and used to generate ATP. Under certain circumstances, muscles need bursts of energy more than can be supplied by the limitation of oxygen, and so the muscles carry out an anaerobic process fermentation. In this case, the glucose is broken down into peruvic acid by glycolysis, and the peruvic acid is transformed into a waste product called lactic acid. Eventually, the lactic acid is transported to the liver and recycled back into glucose. This is what it looks like. Glucose to peruvic acid, generating not a lot of ATP, but it can generate the ATP quickly. This is an anaerobic process. Let's take a different look at the supply of energy for muscles. Uh, this is an artificial look, but it gives you an impression about how much energy is available from the different sources. Let's assume a muscle is using only one source of energy, and let's see how much ATP worth of energy there might be. Now this is very, very rough, but it does give you an impression. On the average, raw ATP in the muscle can supply maybe 10 seconds worth of energy. Now that means if the muscle was using only the loose, free ATP, contracting at its maximum strength, it would only have 10 seconds worth of energy. The creatine phosphate, however, we might say it stores also about 10 seconds worth of energy. So if the muscle depended only on creatine phosphate for ATP, there might be 10 seconds worth 
of energy available from that source. So when a muscle begins to contract, the raw ATP is used immediately and then the creatine phosphate begins to kick in. Meanwhile, muscle glycogen is broken down anaerobically to glucose <clears throat> and the glucose is, is broken down into peruvic acid. The peruvic acid is then changed into lactic acid by the anaerobic process and this kicks in next. Now this anaerobic supply uh, might provide maybe 50 seconds worth or roughly a minute worth of energy. Now don't be misled. It's misleading to think that a biological process occurs by steps. Number one, then it's through, then number two, then it's finished, then number three. No, it doesn't work that way at all. Step number one begins, and before that finishes, step number two begins to kick in. Before that's done, step number three. So this is an approximation of the order of uh, uses of ATP to generate energy. Now remember, we said roughly a minute worth supplied anaerobically. Takes a little while for the mechanism to supply the oxygen for the Krebs cycle and the electron transport system to kick in. But now your breathing begins to increase, oxygen is brought into the cells, blood vessels to the muscles dilate, many things happen to allow a lot of ATP to be generated aerobically. So we might refer to this as step four. Now, it turns out that we have approximately 90 minutes worth of energy from muscle glycogen using an aerobic process. Following that, muscle fat begins to be used as a source of energy. So we might call this step five. This is followed by the transport of energy substances by the blood, blood-borne fatty acids and glucose, step six, and it's estimated that maybe 10 to 40 minutes worth of energy is available from blood-borne fatty acids and glucose. Now this would be an aerobic process, cellular respiration. Eventually, with long-term strenuous activity, blood-borne fatty acids alone supply the energy needs for the muscle. And the reason for that is the glucose has to be saved for the nervous system. Because as you'll see later, the nervous system depends only on glucose as its source of energy. Have you ever noticed if, you're, if you run regularly or you bicycle, when you begin to exercise vigorously for maybe a minute or so, you feel great. And then all of a sudden you begin to pant and gasp for breath. And the reason is, at first you're using anaerobic metabolism to generate ATP. Then your respiratory system and your cardiovascular system begins to increase their activity, bringing in more oxygen because you're beginning to switch to aerobic metabolism to generate ATP. The reason marathon runners look so scrawny is because they have very little body fat because they're using blood-borne fatty acids as their major source of energy. And where do the fatty acids come from? Stored fat in the adipose tissue.